Pull up, pull up. I am known to air crew of the F-18 as Bitchin' Betty. Roll right, roll right. That's a time-honored tradition in the Air Force and Navy. She is the oral alert in the aircraft for when there's something that's really important that a little light bulb isn't enough to get your attention. Every F-18 around the world. Her voice is there for the first 30 seconds every time you fire up the jet. Flight controls, flight controls, flight controls, flight controls. The odds of her having to come on in real life are actually really low, and that's a credit to the company, to Boeing, and to the aircraft itself. We trust that she's telling us what we need to do, and we do what she says. I got a phone call one day from a, a friend who wanted me to come over. She had an air crew there, and he got the call to roll right. Roll right, roll right. I mean, it's now. And he did, and he said if he hadn't rolled right when it said to, he'd have gone in the drink. He'd have died. And uh, that's pretty overwhelming to hear things like that. It, it's just a piece of me. I suspect I'll be in this airplane as long as this airplane's flying. And that's a long time yet. Bingo, bingo. It's really cool to see her, the person behind the voice. But retiring is hard work. I have loved these planes for a lot of years. So I wanted to come out and say goodbye to, say goodbye to the girls. <laughs> Cecil Field, just outside Jacksonville, Florida. The finish line for this F-A-18 Hornet, truck nearly 2,000 miles from retirement in Arizona to a second chance with the Marines. Starting here in Florida with Boeing's C-plus program. Squadron commanders are challenged to train their young pilots. They look out at the ramp and when they're expecting to see 10 or 12 aircraft, they may just have two or three aircraft at that. That is very difficult to uh, train the young pilots with. So that's what's so exciting about this program that Boeing and the, the Marine Corps teamed up to do. Bill Maxwell spent 25 years in the Marines flying F-A-18s. I delivered a number of them out to Davis Mothman Air Base, uh, never to expect to see them fly again. And now we're bringing them back to life. And this is an exciting program because of that. Step one, unload. Craning seven and a half tons of jets safely to the ground. We're good there. The Hornets already saw combat duty then rested in Arizona's harsh conditions for years before arriving at Cecil Field. They need some TLC when they get her. A little loving care. You just want to make sure that uh, you test all the systems. So every Hornet is inspected, damages are repaired, <laughs> and then upgraded. The plus in C+. We're actually upgrading communication systems, radar systems, IFF systems, CIT systems, upgrading the, uh, the ejection seat, putting in the joint helmet modification. There's quite a few modifications going into this. It's pretty extensive. So the Marines will get the best Hornets available for the missions ahead. I've, I've been out there. I know these guys fly seven, eight hour missions over country. And uh, you always want to make sure that the pilot makes it back safely. He's got the best, best product that he can possibly.
Our specific purpose is to execute any sort of mission set that we may uh, be tasked with, specifically in an air-to-air -air role or even an air-to-ground role. So being a multi-role fighter, we have the capability of executing air-to-ground as well as air-to-air -air missions. So whether that be supporting uh, troops on the ground uh, or executing offensive counter-air and uh, destroying the adversary aircraft, we can be tasked with any of that. Our maintainers are doing a great job of fixing the jets and we've had a lot of up jets, not really canceling a lot of sorties. And just the amount of flying that we're getting to do is really just honing all of our skills that we need to in order to deploy. Coming up here to Fallon gives us a unique opportunity to be right next to a very large piece of range space where we can fly uh, and execute all these different mission sets. And then specifically the assets that Naval Air Station Fallon has, specifically with red air support, flying adversary jets to simulate the threats that we might see out there as well as surface air threats that we may see. So we get the whole scope of adversary support that we don't necessarily have back in San Diego. And more specifically, just a lot of training for the newer guys that don't have a lot of experience. They're executing a lot of mission sets that we don't always get to do. Uh, and that integration with the air wing overall, I think it's really just kind of sharpening the sword. We're here today at this F-18 base with a small group of Raytheon employees. The goal here today is to install Raytheon's advanced combat radar on a fleet configured FA-18 in less than one hour using existing cooling and power systems and the tools available to both U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps. So one of the major advantages of AESA, or the Active Electronically Scanned Array, is that it provides uh, enhanced situational awareness to air crew in the fleet. With its no moving parts and its ability to operate in both an air-to-air -air and air-to-ground environment, it gives a capability unmatched on the international level. Pilots are able to go into a theater of operations with this radar, knowing that it's going to work because it's reliable, knowing that it's going to function for them in theater during combat, and feel confident that they are going to be able to operate and still maintain the highest level of situational awareness that they can possibly manage. The Raytheon team is proud of its accomplishments today.